Hey Facebook, this is Charlie with the Austin Aquarium again today, and today we're going to be talking about our axolotls, which you guys can see right in front of you. Now axolotls are really cool. Uh, now axolotls are frequently referred to as the Mexican walking fish, um, which is more of an incorrect name for them because instead of being a fish, they are actually amphibians, so they're the same family as salamanders, uh, related to uh, toads, frogs, all those fun guys. Now axolotls can be found exclusively in one part of the world. Uh, in the Lake Complex in Mexico City. Uh, I'm probably gonna mispronounce the name, I always do, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, but it's in the Lake Complex of Sochi Miloco. Uh, now, if you know the proper way to say that, you know, maybe you're from Mexico City, you're more welcome to comment and let us know. I'd love to actually be able to pronounce that correctly. Um, now, axolotls differ from most other salamanders and that they live per pretty much permanently in water. Uh, in extremely rare cases, an axolotl will progress to maturity and emerge from the water. But by and large, they, they're pretty much content to stay on the bottom of the water. Now, as a result of habitat loss, pollution, and the introduction of invasive species like tilapia and carp uh, in the lakes that these guys come from, uh, these salamanders are being pushed closer and closer to extinction. They've actually been added to critically endangered lists, uh, so these guys out in the wild aren't very that much there anymore. Now, there have been efforts to breed and release axolotls in order to reestablish its numbers. However, the location of the remaining waterways, the Lake of Mexico City that we just mentioned, um, are threatened by the city's continuing expansion and the days uh, the species thriving in the wild are surely quite limited, uh, which is really sad. So we want to make sure you are always doing our part to not pollute, uh, pick up your trash, make sure we're doing everything, we reduce, we use, recycle, because um, species like this, we love to see them out in the wild, but they're quickly diminishing. Now, fortunately due to the importance of axolotl and scientific research, which we'll talk about in just a little more, there's a large amount of axolotls in captive bred. So these guys are in wide numbers in zoos, aquariums like the ones you see right here, um, but also in the pet trade. These guys are a very common uh, pet now. Um, and we'll talk a little more about why they're so scientifically important a little bit later. Now, while you might see plenty of white ones in, uh, in human care, kind of like our guys right there, uh, they're normally a greenish brown or black out in the wild. White ones are known as leucistic and descend from a mutant male that was shipped to Paris in 1863. They were then specially bred to be white with black eyes, so they're a little different than albinos, which generally have red eyes. Now the average lifespan of an axolotl is about 10 to 15 years in human care. Uh, usually kind of out in the wild, it's a little bit less uh, because you can get a better quality of life in human care. Um, lack of pollution, all that fun stuff. Uh, now they can get up to be about 12 inches, about 30 centimeters long. So our guys still have a little bit left to grow. Um, our longest one is about 11 inches right now. And now you might ask how much do these guys weigh? Uh, they're about 2.11 um, to 8 ounces, uh, depending on their size. So that's about max about 227 grams. Now something really cool about the axolotls and something you're probably noticing uh, is the rare trait of retaining their larval features. So they kind of look like tadpoles um, throughout their adult life. Now this condition, um, a mutation is called uh, neoteny. I will say that again, neoteny for you guys. Now neoteny means that a creature can reach maturity without going through metamorphosis. Uh, in less extreme cases, it's simply exhibiting juvenile traits after reaching adulthood. Uh, axolotls are a great example of neoteny because as they grow bigger, they never mature. Uh, unlike tadpoles or uh, similar animals, axolotls are going to hold on to their gills and stay in the water despite actually growing long. Uh, they're also going to retain that dorsal fin that you guys are going to check out around the, their tails uh, their entire lives. Um, so that runs pretty much throughout their whole body. Now another cool fact about that is their feathery external gills that you're going to notice right there breathing through, uh, which protrude from the back of their head. Uh, the filaments attached to the long gills actually increase the surface area for gas exchange. So that's what allows these guys to breathe. Now, something that you may notice on our Facebook thing, we're going to talk a little about the regeneration. Now, that's why these guys are so important for scientific study and that's why they're bred um, so large amounts in captivity now in human care, uh, is because these guys can regenerate their limbs. Now, it's not unusual for many uh, salamanders or the reptiles to regenerate limbs, but axolotls take it to the next level. On top of being able to regenerate like an arm or a leg, these guys can rebuild their jaws, their spines, even their brains without any scarring. Now because of this, uh, the ability to regenerate their lost body parts, axolotls are probably, uh, like I said, the most scientifically studied salamers in the entire world. So they're very, very important. Uh, the research from these guys can help lead to uh, paraplegics, getting back their legs, getting back an arm, uh, veterans, anything like that. It's very important that we are studying these guys. 
Um, now, something that stu a recent study found about the regeneration, because there's still not a lot that we know about it, um, is that there's immune cells called macrophages that are critical in the early stages of regenerating lost limbs. They did a study uh, where they removed those um, macrophages and they weren't able to regenerate their limbs. Um, so it's a really, really cool fact about these guys. Now, another cool thing that we noticed is, I said we have leucistic guys in here. A uh, really fun fact is that they can actually glow in UV light. So what we're going to do is we're going to take away um, the light we had and we're going to put our black lights back on. And you notice a couple of these guys are getting a little bit of that glow. Got one in the back. Now not all of them will do that. Um, depends on their species, uh, morphs and uh, other things like that, depending on uh, their lineage or what other axolotls they come from. Um, now something that you will never find now is a caught uh, axolotl. We do not take axolotls from the wild. Um, because they are critically endangered, and one you wouldn't want to take an animal from the wild anyway. Uh, so, really important that people are breeding these, taking care of them. Now, sadly, they probably will never survive out in the wild uh, very much longer, but if we continue taking great care in zoos and aquariums, hopefully we can retain the species and keep them alive for your kids to see, their grandkids, and the rest of the world to see throughout their lives. Very, very important creatures. Hope you guys learned a lot from our axolotls, and I really hope you guys come check out our axolotls. Uh, we'd love to talk more about them with you guys. But I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and come check us out. We have some great coupons going on right now. Two for Tuesdays. Uh, we also have vitamin C. You bring those coupons in, you guys get great discounts coming on checking out our cram. So come on down, see us, and we'll be happy to have you.